ancient Native American legend speaks of the dead man walking. If you see him in a tornado, you are about to die. The townsfolk of Gerald can now see the arms and legs of a multi-vortex tornado approaching. The dead man has just walked into Gerald. We view it here as approaching Imperial Acre subdivision. We will see three tails combine into one and become the most devastating force our community has ever experienced. We view it here as approaching Imperial Acre subdivision. We will see three tails combine into one and become the most devastating force our community has ever experienced. The townsfolk of Gerald can now see the arms and legs of a multi-vortex tornado approaching. The townsfolk of Gerald can now see the arms and legs of a multi-vortex tornado approaching. I remember thinking, you know, God, please don't, please don't take my son, don't take my family. Don't let me live if they are gone. What had happened to Gerald was an F5. And the signs were quite evident. The countryside, the ground was literally shaved. No grass, no trees, everything shaved to the uh, ground. The asphalt was sucked up, literally gone. The full extent of the damage could be seen from the air. Professor Don Green of Baylor University surveyed the trail of devastation left by the tornado in its wake. At the touchdown of the Gerald tornado, it ripped up the ground. We had a cotton field at the touchdown point in which the cotton plant was not only pulled out of the ground, the soil itself was removed down to a depth of about 18 inches. Next, it swept across a, a wheat field. All of those shafts were then plucked out of the ground, flying through the air by the millions, and then impaling these cows that were in the field beyond that. In terms of uh, the, the exposure to the wind itself, often the uh, cattle lost their, their hair. They were skinned. Often what you would see is something like uh, meat in a butcher shop. In some cases, what you saw was mostly skeleton. I think one of the most impressive uh, images that I saw occurred at one of the early houses where it was only at an F2 strength. In this particular case, you were looking at a storm shelter in which a monolithic concrete slab weighing well over a ton, four to five in inches of concrete, was lifted off of the ground. I looked for the, the top of the storm shelter. I asked the owner where it is. He said he could not find it. I went back a week later and asked again, did you ever find the top to your storm shelter? Apparently it, it caught into the wind and flew off like a frisbee, never to be found again. From there, I could then see how it was gaining in strength, such that by the time it reached Gerald, it was at its greatest strength, its greatest breadth on the ground, almost a half mile wide, and at that point, everything was removed from the ground. Light objects were blown huge distances. A box of checks was later recovered a hundred miles away. Other heavier objects, refrigerators, air conditioners, kitchen sinks, were completely destroyed. They were lifted into the vortex of the tornado and reduced to shrapnel in the swirling column of debris. The effect of such force on a human body is best left to the imagination. Most of those who were killed had to be identified from their dental records. I don't think I've ever been that scared in my life, and I hope to never be that scared again. The first victim that I came across, you, you could see that it was a human form, but 
the wind had abraded the, the body so much that your body does or your mind disconnects you from it. You say almost like, hey, that's not a real person there, you know, but you know in your heart that it is. Once you come across one and then another and another and another, it just kind of snowballs on you and you begin to hate the storm. First day back to school was pretty tough because there was a good number of students of ours that were lost. Some of the members of the football team were victims. The first football game that we had without the boys was an emotional game. 27 people's lives were gone, and the final score of our game was 27. I came across a photograph. It came from a couple that was traveling through here. They saw the funnel cloud, so they stopped and started taking pictures. In one of these pictures, if you turned it sideways, it showed Jesus standing there with his arms outstretched. You can make the robe, the sleeves of the robe. There's even a halo up around where the head is. I got goosebumps as soon as I saw it. It just sent such a chill over me. But then it also put me at ease a little bit because it made me think that he was there telling us that it's okay, that he saw what was going on, and he came to get the people here that had died and take them back with him.